Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hope you're doing fine. Hope that this is uh, a wonderful day for you. And that with, I know there's some storms, but the weather usually gets better. It's summertime. Yes, we had some rain down here in North Carolina, but fortunately that has cleared up. And um, I know people are planning to go away for the 4th of July weekend. Hopefully your plans will turn out wonderful and you'll have a wonderful time. So let's just wait a few minutes um, to see, uh, give other people a chance to come. Um, I am enjoying being down here and um, I wouldn't change it for the world. I was talking to a cousin of mine yesterday and he's in a colder climate uh, further north and they still do not have uh, any signs of summer yet. And I'm like, I wouldn't switch it for the world. And um, some people are just, well, maybe I should stay, maybe I shouldn't stay. Take the plunge, come down to North Carolina or whatever southern state of your choice is. Um, the weather is good and you can do it when you, and you can do a lot more with summertime, I feel. So we're going to start and uh, just to notify people that um, we're, this is emotional eating part two. On Monday, we talked about what emotional eating really is. Because, you know, a lot of times we'll say, oh, we're emotional eaters. But that may just mean occasionally, when we get upset, occasionally. Um, but we found that there are some people who are chronically doing this. Anytime they get upset about any little thing, they're going to eat something. And um, it becomes a very, very, very frustrating condition to live with because your mind is saying, no, I shouldn't really be doing that. But, and yet you still proceed with that type of behavior. Um, most people eat because they're hungry, but emotional eaters will eat even if they're not hungry and they will overeat. And overeating is a source of uh, problems and a source of shame for people who are emotional eaters because they realize that they've eaten more calories than they really intended to. And a lot of the calories are like empty calories, like they'll eat sweets, they'll eat chips, they'll eat a lot of sodas. Uh, you know, instead of just eating a, um, a slice of pizza, they'll buy a large pizza and eat the whole thing. And they know they've overeaten. So they're eating to kind of dampen their emotions or to cope with their emotions. But these are the two things that we found, that even if they've eaten, and they, they're personally eating this, they realize that the emotions haven't gone away, those, those bad emotions like the anger, the fear, the frustration, um, depression, have not gone away, and they're still living with them, and the eating didn't co cope or change anything, they still have them, and in addition, they've overeaten and say they wanted to stay on a diet. They really couldn't do that. And the empty calories, the cakes, cookies, candies, chips. And uh, a lot of people who are, um, who have emotional eating, true emotional eating, have to go on a diet. And that becomes a problem for them because of, you know, the emotional issues that they may have. And as we said before, emotional eaters usually try to dampen their feelings or cope with bad feelings by eating. So on this occasion, we're gonna talk about um, looking at triggers that start emotional eating. Um, we know they're usually from unpleasant thoughts or they try to reward themselves, but unpleasant thoughts win out the most. Um, Rewarding yourself can be, we, we talked about that, how parents reward children and then as people get older, they try to reward themselves. But the unpleasant thoughts are the ones that I think most people with emotional eating are trying to squash down or trying to cope with. Um, every time you're compelled to overeat, try, if you have emotional eating, 
try to figure out what the triggers are. What is causing you to eat all this food? Is it anger? Is it um, frustration? Is it, um, you know, or being overwhelmed? You're just too stressed out. And we talked about how stress can be very prevalent and, and in our lives anyway, but it, it plays a more important or prominent role a lot of times with people who have emotional eating. So the other thing is to drill down. Even though you found the trigger, you want to find out what your emotions are at the time. What are you feeling? Write it down. Um, because a lot of times when you're eating so fast, you don't even have time to really process all that. So start writing stuff down. Be thinking about that. Have your, your, your journal right beside you. And after a while, you do this often enough. Now, I, I know the first week or so, you may not get all of that in every time you eat or when you're overeating. But gradually, you start to see some, some uh, consistent things occurring. And you can start to address them. And if you are in a counseling situation, you can actually share that with them so they can direct you as to what to do next. Um, so these patterns are helpful because then you can understand why you have been using this as a way of coping for so long. And some people don't realize this, but there are times even with family gatherings, people feel stressed and um, they feel like they have to overeat because they feel nervous around family members. Um, so, and we, we touched on this before. People who are emotional eaters sometimes are very overweight or they have a lot of excess weight. And they feel embarrassed about that too because they feel it's their fault. In some ways, yes, some ways, no, because this, this thing always comes up, well, what about your willpower? How come you don't have any willpower to stop doing that? Forgetting that there are a lot of emotional things that are taking place and sometimes more than one emotion at one time and people can't control that unless they slow down and start writing things down so they know where they are in the moment. Um, and if they do try to diet, sometimes it's not successful because they can't control what they eat. The food is controlling them. And when I do my coaching, my health coaching, we go into these things. We let people know that, you know, there are reasons why you may not have been able to lose weight in the past. And we wanna go over them to see where you are and where we can start from and whether there's some other things that you need to do um, besides us talking, maybe you need more counseling also. Because weight loss, we want you to be successful with weight loss. And we want you to know what things are hindering you from moving forward. So we've talked about food controlling your emotions. So we're going to talk about ways to get around it. If you feel you, and, and you may have done it before, and you just kind of fell back into this emotional eating thing again when stress happens, COVID happens, that kind of thing. So you need to find some other ways to deal with emotional eating. Um, if you're feeling depressed, try talking with a friend who always cheers you up or playing with a dog, dog. Dogs are good to play with when you're not feeling good. They're always ready. They're always ready to play, always. So get, get a dog or play with someone else's dog because you'll feel a lot better with that. Anxiety, um, you can try dancing. Some people like dancing. Um, or take a brisk walk, or um, do swimming, or hiking, because those are things that can get your mind off it. And, and to be honest, there are times if I'm, if I'm upset, I have been known to go walking. And sometimes I walk so far on the trail, I, I'm like, I've lost track of how many miles I've walked. And then I say, oh, no, I better go back. So, but by that time, whatever's bothering me has gone. If you're bored, um, that can happen. Um, so try doing things that you like to do. Um, get an audio book or a book you've wanted to read for a while. Watch comedy shows or listen to it. There are so many comedy shows on TV. On your, you, can get a, you can get lots of apps on them. Or you can just go to your favorite you know, comedy show in town or so. And they, they move from place to place. So you can always do something like that. 
But all those things are available to you. Or do some hobbies that you like. You know, some people like to do this, or those planes that fly somewhere. And I guess now they're doing even more complex things, right? So the heart of the matter when it comes to emotional eating are cravings or urges. We talked about, you know, you get this urge to eat suddenly. And there is science behind that. Um, I once, you know, some, for some reason I was in this health book and health magazine and they were talking about all the things you could do to avoid cravings or eating the wrong foods or so. So the only way you're gonna get control of those is if you stop and pause and say, mm, I feel like eating that pasta, if you will. And, um, and you gotta think about it. Do I really wanna eat that? But don't fear. There are ways to distract yourself. Um, the article that I read said, you know, you can start quick cleaning. Because you know what? After five minutes, and this has been clocked, after five minutes, those urges or those cravings will go away. And so that's a win-win situation. You're not eating something and you can put, put that off until it's time for you to really eat something. And plus you got some cleaning done. You can sweep, you can vacuum, you can do whatever. Um, you can also pre-plan what would happen if you had cravings. So if you know you still have cravings, and this is good not just for emotional eaters, for other people who have cravings too. There are people who are diabetic. And they don't eat, you know, they don't emotionally eat, but there are times when they feel like they need something sweet. So this is good for them also. So what you should do is have snacks, healthy snacks around that are kind of crunchy and munchy, such as carrots or uh, celery. And with the, and with the, um, the carrot, excuse me, this, uh, the carrots, you can put that in dip, like a low calorie dip or so. Um, the celery, you could have cream cheese with it. Apples, you can put peanut butter on it. And I'm only saying that because a lot of times people who are used to eating empty calories, if they just put some protein with it, that will make it a little better. I'm not talking about chips or anything. I'm talking about celery, which is a veggie, carrots or apples and, and other fruits too. You can add something to it, um, some protein to it to make it, to make you feel satisfied, okay? So, in addition to putting those cravings down, figuring out what cravings work best for you, you can actually write down. Now, don't forget now, we're trying to get, get around these cravings and these urges. So if you've gotten through that urge or that craving, sit down and write down how you were feeling at the time. Sit down and write down how you feel because you, you didn't get into those urges. And just write down how you're feeling now, how, how good you're feeling about yourself right now. And slowly you'll begin to accomplish what you wanted to accomplish. Now, is that for everyone? No. There are some people who do need to have professional help with their cravings or their urgings. Uh, urgings. And there may be other things, even though it's emotional eating, that's, the, that's what we see, there may be some other deeper issues that need to be addressed. And definitely, I would say, um, go to counseling on your insurance plan and, and find someone who deals in eating issues, okay? So when you engage in emotional eating, you eat so fast that your body doesn't even know that it's eating. And it, doesn't, it, it can't even tell your, your stomach can't even tell your head that you're eating and to stop. So that's another reason why to slow down because you're eating so fast, your body can't even, those signals that are in your body are not even gonna be able to work. So when you're slowing down, you can be in tune with your body. And so one of the things that is recommended is that you slow down your eating. So instead of eating you know, all your mashed potatoes at once and that's done in like less than five minutes, take time to slowly eat it um, so you can taste the flavors, you can taste the aromas of the food, uh, you can appreciate food a little better. And the, the slower you eat it, and you're just savoring all the flavors, 
the more your body is going to be able to say, oh, I'm full now. I don't need any more. And the more you do that, that's what's going to happen. So there are people who eat very fast and they're not emotional eaters, but this is for you too. So slow down and be able to taste the food, taste what it. Um, I remember making some some kind of beef dish and I got this recipe off of um, online and there are a lot of herbs and spices they said in there. I said, man, there's a whole lot of stuff in here. So I, I did what the recipe said, put everything in there and it's, oh, it smelled so good. It smelled so good, but I was in for a, a delicacy surprise because the flavor was so nice and it had all kind of uh, baked in. I think we had to put it in the oven or so. And I enjoy that meal. I can't tell you how much, but have to slow down so you can taste all the flavors. And then I, I think I had some green vegetables with it or something. But it was it was it was delectable. But if you're eating too fast, you're not even going to taste it. So slow down and learn to write down, especially if you have emotional eating, how you're feeling at the time. How are you feeling about the food? And uh, what flavors are you getting from that? So what we're talking about now is in a broader category called mindful eating. And that's a type of eating where you are paying attention to the moment. You're paying attention to the foods that are here on your plate. You're paying attention to how you feel. And you're also paying attention to how your body's responding to it. Um, sometimes people have food on their plate they don't really like, but they're eating it so fast they didn't realize, oh, I really don't like that. And the good thing about mindful eating is that you have control over what you're eating. Um, you, you could have thought if you're eating so fast that, oh, that was good, but now it's not, oh, it's not that good anymore. So you have more control over your eating with mindful eating. And... Um, and you can actually write down and savor some of those foods that you thought maybe you didn't really like. So, so it's a good thing. So if there are no questions, um, we will conclude this part. And our next topic will be mindful eating. And mindful eating is not just for people who are emotional eaters. It's for other people who have challenges with their eating also, because we mentioned cravings, and that's a challenge for a lot of people. Um, if they just see something, they've got to eat it. It may not be all the time, but it's still a craving nonetheless. And uh, people, some people eat fast. They eat very fast. And, and you know you can get indigestion from that. So, so, so what we're talking about now is not just for emotional eaters. It is for everyone else that's eating also. So. If there are no further questions, I'm going to let you know I am Dr. Hope Watts, board certified family physician, health coach, speaker, author, and lifestyle expert. I help have, I have women with common chronic diseases find the right foods and the right exercise. And we do coaching to help them be their best selves and lose that weight. Please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And keep watching um, because you will see the ads for my book very shortly. It is coming out, and I've been promising you this, and you are going to see it. So stay tuned. So until we see you again, stay focused on what you should be eating so that you can get the benefit from it. And it's you're controlling the food. It is not controlling you. So take care, everyone, until I see you again. Have a wonderful evening.